Okay, so we are still using the default background provided by Unity, but it looks dull. So what we want to do is we want to create our own background and use that as the background of this game. So we're going to draw our own background by using a simple free art program called Inkscape and we're going to use that here. Okay, so to download Inkscape, you're going to go to Google and write download Inkscape and from the page you can download it for Linux, Windows or Mac, any version you want. Okay, so here's Inkscape. This is the program whenever you open it. So from here we're going to create the background. So at the very beginning, let's select this rectangle tool right here and draw a rectangle. Okay, as you can see here it is not showing anything because I haven't chosen any color. So let's choose this black and it will show you a color. Okay. So this is the rectangle. Now we want to resize this rectangle as our screen. So I'm going to select this rectangle. At the top you can see W written here and H written here. This W means width and this H means height. So for the width Let's make it 480 as our screen resolution here in Unity. And for the height, let's make it 800. So this is the size of our background. Now what I can do is, now I can give it a color. So as you can see now black is selected. Now from this list of colors, I'm going to select this sky color. I'm going to select that. And as you can see, sky color has been selected. And if you are not satisfied with this color and you want to use any other version of this color, you can just go ahead and double click on this fill right here. Double click. If I delete that. If I just double click, as you can see this fill and stroke menu comes. And from here you can just select any version you want by tweaking these values. If you prefer this wheel, you can go to this wheel and Tweak these values to get the correct version of sky color that you want. That you want. Okay. I think this should be good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. Or just leave it there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a gradient. A gradient means a color from one color you move to another color simply. So as an example, let's say I want to move from sky color to white color. Uh, gradually. Then I will create a gradient. So this is the gradient tool as you can see here. This is the gradient tool. I'm going to click that and by clicking here, by clicking here I'm going to drag this right here and this will create a simple effect for me where it will go from full sky to transparent. Okay, so this is the gradient that we are creating here from full sky to transparent. Okay? So as you can see, it has already created a great sky colored effect for us, but we want to do something more. Anywhere in the beginning, anywhere in the middle of this line, you can double click, just double click anywhere in the line. And as you can see, it has created another node for us. So this node is, will allow us to move the shade of the color one more time. As you can see, now we can move the sky color up and down. Okay, so now what I can do is I can select this bottom one, this bottom circle, select that and from here I'm going to select this green color. Okay, so what that did is this. This will create a green shade at the bottom and a sky color shade at the top. Then I'm going to select another, then I'm going to click one more time here to click to uh, use another node here. I'm going to click that. As you can see, it has created another node for us. And in this node, I'm going to select this green color, this light green color. Okay. So now, as you can see, it has created a nice shade for us of dark and light green color, which looks pretty good. And if I want to edit this gradient anytime, I can just select this and I can edit this anytime. Okay. So this is our gradient. This looks pretty good. 
one more thing we need to do is let's make some clouds right here so that it looks better so to make that I'm gonna select this circle tool and create a small circle as you can see now its color is green as the green color is selected and you can zoom in by pressing the control key and moving your mouse wheel or you can press the control key and press the or you can press the plus button and minus button to zoom in and zoom out okay as you can see it is green color but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and select this white color from here and it will automatically be converted to white now I'm gonna right click duplicate to make a duplicate of it and I'm gonna move it right there again duplicate it move it right there again duplicate it move it right there again duplicate it move it right there so this has created a simple cloud effect for us now I'm gonna select all of them by dragging my mouse from up to bottom I'm gonna select all of them I'm gonna go to path and click on union what this union do is this union will combine all of these objects and make a simple ob make a single object as you can see because of that we have got this cloud now let's zoom out and as you can see our cloud looks pretty good what I want to do now is while selecting the cloud from the fill and stroke property as you can see here we have an opacity property and a blur property I'm gonna increase this blur property a bit to make it a bit blurry and give it a more cloudy effect I think this should be good enough okay this should be good enough or maybe this one okay select that and this one okay I think this should be good enough so now I'm gonna right click duplicate it and put it right there to make some more clouds duplicate it put it right there okay so this is how our sky looks like if you don't want to do this you can just uh, don't use these clouds and just make the background with sky and green color okay so now we need to import it before importing it to unity we need to export it from Inkscape okay so all you need to do is select this outer rectangle make sure you select this outer rectangle go to file export bitmap and save it as a position where from where you want to import it okay so I'm gonna select it I'm gonna make its name brick background and then what I'm gonna do is as you can see here we have the width and height and if you want to change this then you can change it to anything you want then I'm gonna click on export and as you can see here I am exporting it to PNG file and you should also make it PNG file because that's a great format and make sure to click on export and remember where you have exported it now in my case I have exported it in the users and here I have exported it and the name is background as you can see this is the background so I'm gonna drag this and move it into unity and drop it into my sprites folder so as you can see in my sprites folder now I have my background okay but the problem is we have given a alpha channel to it we have give we have made some position of it transparent so what the problem will be let us see that if I drag and drop it on the scene as you can see since this portion is transparent so it is showing the background blue color of the default unity color okay so let's go and change that so we can go to Inkscape again we can select this gradient tool and as you can see this is the gradient that we have created now this portion from this node we have the transparency from this node we have from blue to transparent and also from green to transparent so this portion is transparent and this is having the problem so what we can do is we can select this portion 
And as you can see, the opacity is zero. That means it is transparent. So instead of making it transparent, we're going to select it and make its color white. Just click on white and it will be white. And now you can see the opacity is 100. Okay. So now it won't make any problem. So now I can select the whole thing again. Go to file, export bitmap and this time name it background 2 and export it. Now I can get this background too and just drag and drop it into Unity. And now you can see that there is no problem with transparency. Okay, so now if I try to drag and drop it, as you can see, there's no problem. Okay, but we are not going to do it this way. We are going to use a canvas image or a UI image to do this. So you're going to click on create UI image. So this is the image that you're going to use. And then I'm going to, from the Rex transform property, I'm going to select this gear, click on reset, and it will reset its position at the center. Okay. Now you can see whenever we add an image, a canvas component is automatically added to Unity. This canvas, if I zoom out, this canvas is the parent object of all the UI or user interface elements in Unity. Okay, So whenever we are adding any user interface uni elements, Unity will automatically add a canvas for us. Okay, So what we want is, we want this canvas to be scaled according to our screen size. So let's say we are playing it in a small mobile device, then we want to adjust the user elements or user interface elements according to our screen size. We want it to go scale down and scale up according to our screen size. So in order to do that, after selecting the canvas, from the canvas scalar component, instead of constant pixel size, we're going to click that and select scale with screen size. So that means it will now scale with any screen size we want or any screen size we use, this canvas component, all the components inside this canvas will automatically get scaled according to that. And here you can see we have something called reference resolution. This reference resolution is for which resolution we are actually designing this. So since we are designing it for 480 by 800, so we're going to set the reference resolution to 480 by 800 okay and as you can see below that we have prop we have a property called match with width or height so from here you can select expand or shrink which will match only with width or only with height but we want to make it match with width and height equally according to our screen sizes so that is why we're going to select the first option then as you can see here we have a match property and then we have width and height so that means how much we want it to match from with the width and height. As you can see, if I drag this thing, so it will decide how much we want it to scale or how much we want it to match according to the change of width and height. So we want it to match equally to the width and height with its change. So that is why we'll keep it at the center and make the property 0 0.5. Okay, so this is it. So this will make our canvas resizable to any screen size that we use. Okay, so now I'm going to select this image, drag it down, and by selecting this image from the source image component, I'm going to click on this circle. And as the source image, I'm going to use this one, this brick background too. And as you can see, this brick background too has been selected. Now, all we need to do is we need to go to the image settings, this portion, and click on set native size. And that will set it to, the, to its original native size. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, now it is set as its original native size. But as you can see, now we cannot see the bricks. Okay? So in order to solve that, I'm going to select the canvas. And as you can see from the canvas, its render mode is selected as screen space overlay. I'm going to click on that and click on screen space camera. This allows us to render it from a specific camera that we specify. As you can see, it gives us a render camera to be mentioned here. So we're going to drag this main camera and drop it inside this camera portion. 
Now as you can see this camera renders it and now we can see these bricks and now it looks pretty good. So now everything is great, everything is looking bright and cool. So we will continue making this and making it more awesome.